Hi. 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 I'm Bas. How are you? I'm Sue. How are you doing? Nice that you find some time for me. Oh. Yeah, there's not enough time for everything in the modern world, is there? <laughs> no. <laughs> A lot of conversations I have are about that humans will take care of um, evolution now. But in your point of view, um, humans seem to be quite passive, you know. They are just kind of victims of replicating processes. Well, we're not just victims, we're an intrinsic part of them. But I'm just laughing because the idea that we'll take care of evolution, I know what people mean if we're doing genetic modification, we're interfering with the processes of evolution. Um, it, 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 Many of the things we do in, in society are affecting the evolution of memes, the evolution of ideas and technology, but you can't take care of it. You can't control it. Evolutionary processes, you, know, you get this massive explosion of, 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 of DNA or of, um, of ideas or of technologies, and then selection, we're part of the selecting machinery. It will take whatever way it takes. The things we do affect it, but we can't control it. And you talk about um, replicators. You say, um, well, first we have genes, then we have memes, and now we have dreams. Can you explain what that means? The idea of replicators is not the only way of looking at evolution, and there are many scientists who take a different view on it. But it's one way of thinking about evolution, is to think of the information that is copied, varied, and selected as being the driving force behind evolution. So in the case of plants and animal, animals and biology on the whole planet, we can think of the information, the gene, the genetic information coded in strings of DNA as being the replicator. That information is what is copied again and again with variations. Most of the variants die. Most of the animals and plants created by those variations don't survive, don't pass on their genes to the next generation. That's what's, evol what's evolving is which replicators survive and which are selected out. And then you can say, well, apply the same thinking to words, stories, um, pictures, financial institutions, scientific ideas, all of these things are information copied from person to person. That are, that are what you call memes. These are memes. So they're information that's copied with variations. Every time we tell a story, it's a little bit different. Um, we make a theory. Other people make a variation on the theory. One of the theories, they're tested. One of the theories does better. The others are thrown away. The same process is going on. So in this case, we call the information underlying that the replicator, and that's what we call memes. And I'm thinking, is this electronic information, this silicon-based digital information, is this really still more memes or is there something different going on here? And I've thought about that for years. And during those years, the technology changed dramatically. It's going so fast, it's incredible. So um, during the, those years, smartphones came along, um, all, all the, the social media came along. And I began to think, under what circumstances would I say we have a third replicator? Genes, memes, and another one. We would have a third replicator, I thought, when there is digital information based in machine or in, in, in our technology, which is being copied, varied, and selected by the technology. In other words, the three essential processes of evolution would be carried out without any necessary human intervention. Now, is that happening? Well, certainly the machinery that we've constructed is capable of copying things, storing them, making variations, selecting them. The search engines are doing that all the time. It still involves us where we put our search item into the search engine. So it hasn't got away from us completely. But I would say because all those three things are happening out there, we have a new replicate. The question to my mind is, is thinking about it in terms of a third replicator a helpful way of thinking mm. about it? In scientific terms, will it lead us to make novel predictions that come true? Will it help us to understand what's going on and potentially to, to um, ameliorate the, the worst harm that it might do? I think so. So you talk about the danger of people being overwhelmed by this explosion of new technology. 
is there also a danger of people being humans becoming subservient to the new technology that to put it crudely robots taking over <laughs> i don't think it's going to be robots taking over it it could be but i think it's going to be much more distributed systems taking over i mean we're handing all this stuff over to an evolutionary process that we don't understand we're pouring up all this data all these pictures all these videos all these ideas all this writing out there and all this all these programs and systems will be self-organizing and evolving. So it'll be that that's concerning me rather than robots, which after all are kind of confined, you know, a robot is a machine with a brain-like structure in it. I'm I'm more concerned with the stuff out there that's already <laughs> going through us both now, isn't it? All this information. And I wonder whether we're, it might be something like an analogy with, with mitochondria. You know, mitochondria are the little kind of powerhouses subcellular organelles inside every cell of our body and, and other animals and, and plants and so on. Um, they were originally free living bacteria that got absorbed into another cell and both gained. So the, the little ones went inside, they could give up all their other processes and just do energy production. The big cells gained because they didn't have to do energy production anymore. They had to protect themselves make boundaries and so all those kind of things membranes and so on um and it was a, it's a symbiotic process it's called endosymbiosis and i wonder whether we might be already becoming something like that we are willingly giving ourselves up to this massive machine producing the energy and all the resources required to allow it to grow and grow and grow as evolutionary processes will do so long as they have the resources that they require now this It's, it's only an analogy and one should be careful of analogies, mm -hmm. but it is a very sobering one because it suggests that our role becomes more and more slave-like. So you don't believe that it's possible for scientists or humans to instill their values into an intelligence or artificial intelligence system? It depends on the system. If you have a, a, a simple system, you, you, you've got much more control over it Yes. If you have an isolated robot that you could, you know, give it programs that will enable it to help a human being and to, to care for it. But as soon as you've got massively interconnected systems, as soon as you've got super intelligence, if you like, evolving in its own way out there in a massively interconnected cloud, internet, whatever, um, I don't think that it's possible at all because the fundamental motivations come from replicators copying themselves and the ones that succeed will not necessarily be the ones that care about us. We can try to manipulate it. We can try. We'll have some effect. But I think it's we're long past already the point where we can say we are not going to make any machines that will harm us. If we're useful to all that information, if it can survive better with us building the power stations and giving it stuff, then we're useful. If it if there comes a time when actually it will get on better without us, then it's going to be bad for us, isn't so it? So we, we had the selfish gene and now we have the selfish dream. Indeed, indeed. But remember what is meant by selfish. Selfish genes, they're only... I have to say motivation, but it isn't a, you know, a complex motivation. They're, their only desire is to get copied. But selfish genes give rise to unselfish human beings, unselfish um, cats who will feed their infants. I mean, unselfishness of all kinds is get, arises from selfish genes. Selfish memes, they are, their only motivation is to get copied, but they give rise to wonderful things that, that, that Uh, that we appreciate like the, art, book. like the book and like like art and, and and music and and all kinds of things that give us joy and pleasure and, and community and so on so the fact that the replicator is selfish doesn't mean that its products are and the same with dreams all this information out there is intrinsically selfish that means it will get replicated when it can without caring about us So it doesn't care about us because it can't. It's just information being copied by, by computers and, and we servers. cannot interfere with it. We cannot, like Bostrom says, 
instill them with human value. No, we can interfere, we can do things, we can prod and poke and add and, you know, but we can't imbue it with values. Its values are arising. And I think this is really important. We can affect it, but we can't control it. We can do things that can nudge it this way and that, but we can't say overall, we're going to make it serve us. It's, it's already way, way escaped from that possibility. Mm-hmm.